Greetings all and welcome back to the Tech Update. If you're a proud owner of the Trimui Smart Pro handheld, you've probably heard about Nuli, the custom firmware that promises to take your emulation experience to new heights. Nuli is a fork of the Linux based but a set of 40 software that many a retro gamer is familiar with. But is it better than the stock firmware? Watch till the end to find out what I think. Just a short disclaimer first, this is not a hands-on experience. The facts here are based on research, my opinion and the experience from a few hands-on reviewers who I have referenced in the description. Hopefully you still find some value from this content despite this, as I do endeavour to research the topics I post extensively. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. First up, let's talk about the good stuff. Nuli inherits the robust emulation capabilities and user-friendly interface that Baracera is known for. One of the standout features of Nuli is its integration with Emulation Station, a sleek front-end that makes navigating your games library a breeze. With Emulation Station, you can effortlessly scrape game metadata and artwork, creating a visually stunning library that'll make your inner retro gamers squeal with delight. But that's not all. Nuli also comes bundled with Portmaster, so it makes it a little bit more convenient to install. Portmaster is a powerful tool that allows you to play ports of well-known retro games directly on your Trimui iSmart Pro. Want to run classics like Grand Theft Auto or Wildlands right in the palm of your hand? Portmaster is the way to go. You will have to access the newly folder structure on your device via the network and run the Portmaster script before it will be available on your device though. While Nuli undoubtedly brings a lot to the table, it is important to recognize that it is still in an early stage of development, which means that there are bound to be some hiccups along the way. One of the biggest challenges reported by early adopters is the compatibility issue with Windows. Since Nuli formats the ROMs partition into EXT4, Windows users may have to jump through a few hoops to transfer their games, such as using Linux or SMB file transfers. This certainly isn't the most user-friendly approach, but hey, we're dealing with cutting-edge software here. One suggested solution is to format the SD card to XFAT and then reinsert it into the TrimUI so Nuli can create the required folder structure. You can format it directly in the Nuli firmware by going to Settings, Advanced, Front-end Developer Options, Format the Disk, and Change File System. Alternatively, you can put your SD card into an SD card reader and format the card on your Windows PC to XFAT, and then afterwards insert it into your Nuli TrimUI again for it to create the required folder structure. Just be aware, if you do this, Portmaster Games will not work properly as it requires the EXT4 file system to function. If Portmaster is important to you and you want to stick with the EXT4 file system, you can transfer your ROMs and BIOS files over the Wi Fi network. This is a bit slower for the initial setup, but can be done quite easily. I will leave a link in the description to the Nuli website where you can find detailed guides on how to do this. When using network transfer for your files, there is another requirement that you need to be aware of, and that is that Nuli only supports WPA2 encryption on Wi Fi networks. So if you have the newer WPA3 encryption on your home Wi-Fi network, you may need to drop your security encryption down to WPA2 or create a hotspot on your phone and connect your PC and device to that network for the transfer process. Once again, the Nuli website has detailed instructions on this, so be sure to give it a read before you install the firmware. Another few potential stumbling blocks is the fact that only the custom firmware supports configuring the RGB LEDs, the FN function button, and has the impressive sleep mode that drains almost no battery. The controls in Nuli is also not automatically mapped across all devices. If you own any of the Anbinic RG35XX range, you will probably have to map the controls on setup. As far as I could tell, this was not a problem with the Trimi iSmart Pro though. So, Nuli has its advantages, and it seems to be mainly in the aesthetic department. It may seem insignificant, but trust me, Emulation Station really takes a retro experience to the next level. I've only installed it on my PC but it gets me excited every time I scroll through the emulators available and see the artwork and hear the funky retro music. Seeing videos of the games when scrolling through them also looks awesome. As mentioned though, if you do install Nuli, it seems you will have to be willing to tinker a bit and follow some guides to get the full functionality you want. So whether or not this is worth it will really be up to your preference and the ability to tolerate having to research and customize the software experience. Personally, it seems like early days for the software to me and I think I would wait a bit for the dev team to iron out all the kinks. I agree with the reviewers though. I think this firmware has immense potential to be epic. I'm sure with some time the developers will get there. Just remember as well that the people who create this type of custom firmware do it for free, out of a passion for all things retro. It is a lot of work, so it deserves acknowledgement and recognition. 
Now that you know the pros and cons, let's dive into a quick breakdown of the installation process for those who are still eager to give Nuli a whirl. First, you'll need to download the Nuli image file from the GitHub repository. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once that's done, you need to burn it onto an SD card using a disk imaging tool like Valena Etcher and Rufus. Insert the SD card into your Trimi Smart Pro and power it on. You should see the Nuli logo appear. Give it some time to set up at this point. It may take a minute or five. After it launches into the emulation station interface, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and copy your BIOS and ROM files onto the SD card with the BIOS files going into the BIOS folder and the ROMs into the respective system folders. Due to legal constraints, I can't tell you where to get these though, but trust me, it's not too difficult to figure it out. And that's it, you've successfully installed Nuli on your Trimi Smart Pro. Once again, keep in mind that this is a new firmware. There might be some rough edges. The developers are actively working on improving the experience with each update. If you want to see a video overview of the process, check out the description for some of the source videos. If you want to take a more in-depth look at the Trimi iSmart Pro, you can click on the link on screen now for my overview video on it. That's it for today's video though. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next tech update.